With Shadowlands Season 4 launching on the 2nd of August for NA servers and the 3rd of August for EU servers, Blizzard have reintroduced the Winds of Wisdom experience bonus which is now available until the 1st of August. Winds of Wisdom grants you a 50% experience bonus from all sources, it's active from level 10 to level 59, and it stacks with other experience buffs like War Mode. In this video, I'm going to highlight the most efficient ways to level in Patch 925 to make the most of this temporary experience bonus. Firstly, it's worth noting that new players and experienced players will have an entirely different leveling experience from one another. And this video is more geared towards seasoned players looking to level up their alts. Let's begin with a couple of things to help you get started. First, if you have enough gold, you can purchase heirloom gear from the heirloom vendor in either Ironforge or Undercity, which you can then add to your heirloom collection. Heirlooms provide various bonuses to your leveling experience depending on how many pieces of the set you have equipped, but the main benefit of heirloom gear is that it reduces the rate at which you consume rested experience. This essentially means that you'll be gaining more experience for killing creatures and completing quests for a longer period of time than if you were wearing no heirlooms at all. The first rested experience bonus is active if you are wearing two pieces of the heirloom set, and the second experience bonus is applied with six pieces of the set. From the same vendor, you can also purchase scouting maps for each of the continents and worlds from every expansion. Scouting maps grant you immediate access to every flight point corresponding to the scouting map you've used, allowing lower level characters to travel much faster from point A to point B, which is especially important between the levels of 10 and 29 when you don't have access to flying. You can purchase these scouting maps for 10,000 gold each, but if you don't want to buy all of them at once, I would recommend investing in either the Eastern Kingdoms or Kalimdor scouting map for the time being as these are the zones you'll be spending all of your time in until you hit level 30, when you can then unlock flying. Since heirlooms and scouting maps are saved to your collections journal, all of your characters will have access to them once you've learned them, so purchase them on a character with enough gold to spare, and then log back over to your leveling character to reap all of the benefits. I would also recommend finding add-ons to help you through your leveling experience. First, Leotrix Plus is a fantastic quality of life add-on with many different settings you can toggle based on your own playstyle and personal preference. With the add-on installed, type slash LTP in your chat window to open the Leotrix Plus interface. From there, I would recommend that you toggle the Automate Quests option in the Automation tab. This function will then fully automate quest pickup and turn-ins for you without you needing to click through the various quest dialog pages. However, Leotrix Plus will still stop on a quest turn-in page if you have quest rewards to choose from. You may think that picking up and turning in quests isn't time consuming at all, but you will be surprised just how fast Leotrix Plus can do it for you, so give it a try. Another feature of Leotrix Plus that will speed up your leveling process is the faster auto loot function, which you can find in the system tab. This does exactly what it says on the tin and essentially allows you to loot creatures faster without the need for a loot window pop-up. If you have enough bag space, I would recommend toggling this feature on so that looting doesn't slow you down. There are lots of other great quality of life improvements that Leotrix Plus can make for you, including the ability to automatically skip cutscenes, change your UI to better suit your needs, or even block other players from interacting with you if you want to level completely on your own. Auto Vendor is another great add-on you can use to more efficiently sell your junk items to a vendor. With the add-on installed, every grey or white item will start being sold to the vendor in waves, and then it's just a case of closing and reopening the vendor window until all of your junk is gone. You can also toggle automatic repairs so that whenever you interact with a vendor who offers a repair service, your gear will automatically be repaired. And if you're in a guild and you're a high enough rank to do so, you can choose to have every repair bill covered by your guild bank. There are other settings in Auto Vendor, such as setting a minimum item level for items to no longer be considered junk and therefore not to be sold, as well as automatically selling non optimal soulbound gear and so on. But these features become more important the higher level you are, so don't worry about them for now. Another add on that I found useful for leveling was Handy Notes. This was particularly helpful when I was hunting treasures in Warlords of Draenor as I had all of the available treasures marked on my map once I installed the Draenor plugin for the add-on. With all of that out of the way, let's now move on to the actual leveling process and the route you should take. 
If you've never played the game before, you will be sent to Exile's Reach by default after you've created your first character, as this is the tutorial zone for new players. But I would also recommend Exile's Reach to seasoned players as well, as it can be completed in around 30 to 45 minutes if you're quick. The quests are fairly close together, and as it's a tutorial zone, the quests are also very straightforward. Finishing Exile's Reach will get you to level 10, where you will then be sent to your faction's capital city, Stormwind for Alliance players and Orgrimmar for Horde players. There, you will be given a tour of the major areas of the city if you're a new player, but you will have the option to skip this part if you've done it already. Once that's out of the way, new players will be limited to only one expansion's worth of levelling content, that being Battle for Azeroth while other players who have completed that before will be able to choose an expansion to level through by speaking to Chromie. She can be found by the Emissary buildings in Stormwind and Orgrimmar. Now this part is fairly divisive, as many people would recommend levelling through Warlords of Draenor due to the high amount of bonus objectives you can complete and the huge amount of treasures you can loot. However, at level 10 you are still incredibly slow, and although you will be able to learn to ride a mount, you won't have access to 100% ground mount speed until level 20, and you won't unlock flying until level 30. Because of this, I would recommend selecting Cataclysm for the time being, as this will give you access to all the old low level zones content like Elwyn Forest, Westfall, Teldrassil, Durotar, and so on, which were designed with low level players in mind, meaning that quest hubs aren't too far apart and you don't have huge amounts of travel time between quest objectives. Follow these quest lines through the old zones and you will find that they eventually start to connect to one another, such as the Elwyn Forest quests eventually leading you to take a quest sending you to Westfall. If there's a particular zone that you know well and can level through quickly, you can prompt the start of that zone's quest line through your adventure journal, which has the default keybind Shift J. Now which low level zones you wish to level through will depend on you, your faction, which zones you know best, and which zones you enjoy the most. For me, if I'm leveling an alliance character, I would quest through Elwyn Forest, including Eastvale Logging Camp to the east, and the Hogger quest line to the west. I would then head into Westfall and complete the storyline there. Duskwood also has a great selection of quests that are nicely grouped together in clusters around the zone. And finally, if I haven't hit level 30 by now, I would then head into Northern Stranglethorn. For Horde players, Durotar works great as the Horde equivalent of Elwyn Forest, which can also lead nicely into the Barrens. Alternatively, Ashara is an option, and both Ashara and the Barrens questlines will eventually lead you into Ashenvale as well. Again, this is up to personal preference to a certain extent, but I would recommend avoiding zones like Desolus, Feralas, Blasted Lands, the Burning Steps, and so on, as these zones were originally designed for higher level players with faster mounts, or in some cases, flying mounts. Keep questing through your old zones of choice until you hit level 20. Then, you not only unlock 100% ground mount speed, but also PvP talents, and most importantly, War Mode. Enabling War Mode will grant you a 10% experience bonus for killing creatures and completing quests, but it does opt you in to open world PvP, meaning that members of the opposite faction can freely attack you and kill you if they are also opted in. This can cause issues with higher level players being able to kill you very easily and potentially stifling your leveling speed if they keep coming back to kill you again and again. But if you're in a faction specific questing zone like Duskwood or Westfall for example, you're less likely to run into a player from the opposite faction anyway, so you should be fairly safe. As long as you are level 20, you need to be in your faction's capital city in order to enable war mode, but it can be disabled from any rested area, such as an inn. War mode is an optional bonus to your leveling speed if you're willing to risk open world PvP. My advice is to give it a try, and then turn off war mode if you find yourself being ganked by another player repeatedly. Continue questing through old low level zones until you hit level 30, when you can then learn to ride a flying mount. You can then continue to play through old zones if you'd like to, as you will get them done in a very short space of time considering that they weren't meant for players who could fly. But as flying gives you much better access throughout each zone, I would now recommend heading back to Chromie and switching to either Warlords of Draenor or Legion Chromie time. As I mentioned earlier, Warlords of Draenor offers great experience through bonus objectives and treasures, 
And now that you can fly, you will now have a much easier time accessing treasures that were more difficult to reach on foot. Also, the initial questline that guides you to set up your garrison offers a good amount of experience just on its own. As for Legion, the biggest selling point for fast levelling is the Legion Assault event that occurs in one of the Legion zones at least once per day, highlighted by this demon portal icon on your map. Wowhead also has a timer that will tell you when the next Legion Assault will be active, as well as timings for subsequent assaults. The currently affected zone will have all of its world quests replaced with world quests specific to the Legion invasion. Simply clear the map of world quests to earn a ton of experience. Just be mindful that Legion assaults aren't always available. They usually spawn roughly 18 hours apart, and each assault is active for 6 hours. Since all the content we've covered so far has revolved around open world questing content, I thought I would also touch on other forms of levelling and their pros and cons. Dungeons can be a great way to earn a good chunk of experience, but the majority of that experience comes from completing the dungeon. If you're in a random group of people rather than an organised group of friends, someone may leave, the group may fall apart, and you might struggle to put a new group together. Additionally, dungeon queues are notably faster for tanks and healers than they are for DPS, so depending on your class and spec, you may have a better or worse chance at getting lots of good dungeon queue times. I never level through PvP out of personal preference, but generally speaking, PvP is not a very quick method of leveling as, much the same as dungeons, the majority of your experience will come from completing a battleground, and you will earn more experience if your team wins the battleground, but that can't be guaranteed. I also suck at PvP, so. Questing and open world content is deemed by many players as tedious, repetitive, and mundane, but it is usually the safest bet for getting you leveled quickly and reliably. Once you hit level 48, you will have the option to begin the Shadowlands campaign which will send you to the Moor. If you're level 50 and you've completed the Moor introductory questline on a previous character, you will be able to skip this part and head immediately to Ouroboros, where you can choose to level through the campaign or through Threads of Fate. Threads of Fate is the better option of the two, as this gives you access to all four Covenant zones of the Shadowlands, and allows you to make progress on aiding each of the Covenants by completing side quests, bonus objectives, world quests, looting treasures, and killing rares in each zone, and completing each of the zone quests will reward you with a ton of experience. Entering one of the zones will trigger the start of that zone's Threads of Fate progress quest, and you can work on them all simultaneously if you'd like. I would recommend this, as you'll eventually run out of world quests and bonus objectives to do in one zone for that day. As a change of scenery from zone quests, you can also complete one wing of Torghast every day, with Vanish's daily quest called Traversing Torghast, which offers a good amount of experience upon completion. Experience gained within Torghast is fairly minimal, so depending on your gear and how well you play your class and spec, you may wish to get to the end as quickly as possible to get it over and done with, and get the bulk of your experience. But otherwise, you'll get a small amount of experience for killing mobs, opening chests, freeing souls, and interacting with Covenant NPCs inside Torghast. Doing all of these activities will give you more animal powers to make you stronger, as well as more Phantasma to spend on even more animal powers if you need an extra boost to finish your Torghast run. With all of that done, you should soon find yourself nearing level 59, and you should still hopefully have all four of your Covenant Zone Threads of Fate quests ready to turn in. Then, it's just a case of handing them in one by one and essentially knocking out the final level in one incredibly satisfying fell swoop. And there you have it! Those are my tips for efficiently levelling in patch 925 with the Winds of Wisdom experience bonus. I hope you found this video useful, and if you did, please give a thumbs up, I would really appreciate your support. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications if you'd like to stay up to date with my content. Happy levelling, and I will see you again soon. Bye!